It's my duty to please the booty. And Muzz got mad at me, the coach, and he goes, Jesus Christ, why don't you just work two nines? And I went, okay. Ah, ah, switch the call. Please, please, please never do that. Yep. So. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 460 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka, here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. Summer coming to an end here. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed their Labor Day weekend. Going to check in with the fellas right now, see what's shaking across the pond once again. Matt Murley, EBR, up and running. How's it going so far, buddy? Uh, it's going good. I uh, had a nice weekend over here. Something I never thought I would be doing. I went and I went to a, a dance class. I went to my daughter's first ever dance class. It was a big day. It was the first activity we did with her. I mean, when you're a kid or even as you're getting an adult, you, I, I'm just assuming my first thing is going to be a hockey practice or a soccer practice or baseball because that's all I did as a kid was that kind of stuff. So it was uh, definitely interesting. I was definitely out of my element in the in the dance class, but that was uh, it was fun. How'd she do? She loved it. She she loves dancing. She she could dance all day, listen to the music all day long. She wears her little tutu. She has little slippers that look like ballet shoes. So she was all about it. Good little Sunday morning activity that led into I got to have a little fun afterwards. Went down to the sports bar, watched some soccer. I became an Arsenal fan through the day. I made a big Ooh. wager on them. So I'm an ars big Arsenal guy now, but I got to shout out Wit. The Wit comes from, from nowhere. I haven't heard from the guy in like a week. He's like, Merles, you know that Swedish guy, the golfer, this Ludwig Auberg? He's like the big amateur. He's like, he's got a chance to win today. Throw a little something on him, plus 900. Boom, the guy came all the way back and won. So the Wit gave me a nice win or two. So great little Sunday over here. There you go. No, I, I'm assuming no Labor Day over in uh, Sweden, right? No, everyone was back to work today. I um, I was up mowing the grass. We got a little community here. Everybody's supposed to chip in. I end up doing all the grass mowing because I'm around during the day, a couple hours free. So I take care of all the lawn work, pick up all the apples that are falling off the tree. It's 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 fall over here. If you need help with the grass, hit me up. I'll uh, I'll be happy to help. Mister G, what's going on, buddy? How was your Labor Day weekend here? Uh. Pretty, not the best Labor Day weekend for myself. Played a little Ooh. golf. Uh, had to go to the vet, which cost me a casual five grand oh, uh, because my dog decided to go into my girlfriend's purse and eat some things that she probably shouldn't eat. So, yeah, I spent the weekend just kind of hanging out, on, basically on my phone the entire Labor Day weekend, sitting inside because of because uh, I was at the vet the whole time. But it led me to, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, Dave Portnoy pizza review that happened last week, but <laughs> I was, did. I was sitting in this, in this veterinarian waiting room, just watching meme after meme after meme of the fuck you. No, fuck you. You're a fucking clown. It was so funny. I was getting so many weird looks, but all right. I don't know if you've ever been to dragon pizza. I don't know. Why don't you lay the whole story out for our, for our listeners here and go ahead. Yeah, we had Dave Portnoy on last week. I know I was kind of surprised at how many people complained about it. I know not everybody who listens to Chicklets is, is a Barstool fan. I, we understand that. But, you know, Dave, Dave's, you know, one of the most successful entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in the country, in the world, basically. We had him on. We never had him on before. And th it, two or three it will days be later. Our most, it will be one of our most uh, viewed episodes all summer too. It will be our most viewed episode all summer. So yeah, and I thought you know people just listen to him, man. Even if you don't like him, I mean, hear him out. I mean, I know that all these hit pieces over the air, people get the wrong impression of the guy, and that's you know I think we kind of want to show people that this is who he is here. A couple of days later, his uh, one bite pizza review come out. He actually he teased it on his interview with Tucker Carlson, and I couldn't believe it. I I couldn't believe that he went outside, did his review, and then the guy, the owner, comes out and starts barking at him. It's like. This guy just gave you money, spent money, whatever score he gives, people are going to go there. 6.4 is not the worst score in the world. He even said, like, I'm not a huge Palm fan, and that's why he scored a little low. And this guy should have said nothing, and boom, you would have had business up the wazoo. Instead, he comes out because he read a New York Times. By the way, the New York Times wasn't even a hit piece. It was the softest fucking article ever on Dave. And Dave snapped. They went back and forth, and it became a firestorm here. Uh, I got to say, gee, I don't know, was that top 
Was that the best review ever or top two, top three? Yeah, I, I mean, personally, I think I think that's I mean, just because I used to live right near Davis Square in Somerville, like I, I just thought it was the best review ever. There were two things that stood out to me. One, when the guy called him out right at the beginning, he's like, I don't like what you do for small businesses. Dave's like, I raised 50 million dollars for small businesses. Like in my head, I'm like, I don't know if there's a person in America that's done more for small businesses than Dave Portnoy. And when he was like. He's like, I work so hard. Like, I work my, I own a business. Dave's like, I sold my business for $450 million and then $100 million and then bought it back for a buck. Who's the clown now? I, I just loved it. Everything about it. I, I would say it's the, the best review of all time. Number two being the Pink Whitney pizza review where the pizza fell and just the first Chicklets one. That was incredible. Yeah, and this one had the other characters in it too. There, the the Dom guy oh, comes sliding Dom of the in. Year. Dom, Dom of the, of the year. year, and then the girl that was the big fan. She's taking the selfies with them. The the other guy fumbling the earpiece with the kid. It was just it was just chaos, chaos. <laughs> a, a, absolute chaos. And like you said, G, like of all things to say to Dave, you wrote, you you hurt small businesses. The guy raised fifty million dollars, like, and he honestly thought like you're gonna ruin people's businesses with one bite of food. It's like, buddy. That's it's an ironic name. Dave says it at one bite. And he eats seventeen fucking bites of it. Like it, it was. That was just the absolute. All right, that's moron, the perfect man. person who re, is that guy's a headline reader. You know what I mean? Like he did no research. Like to to actually think that Dave takes only one bite of the pizza and then rates it like what a fucking idiot it's like what an idiot and then i mean i i had to go check out the google reviews the yelp reviews i'm pretty sure yelp shut the page down stoolie's just just (laughs) completely (laughs) destroying this guy's business i remember imagine like waking up in the morning just like going to work checking the google reviews and just being like wow last night we were a four-star restaurant four-star pizza place now we're zero yeah, like oof. Yeah, the guy could have said up. nothing and made a ton of money. Instead, he had to be a big mouth, and he, you know, he didn't even make a point. Like Dave's like, "What I do?" He's like, "Everything, everything, everything." He just made a total asshole out nothing. of himself. Nothing, and like, yeah, Dom of the Year. That guy had the comedic timing of like Richard Pryor, just popping in at the right time. He's been blowing up since then. The, the two girls there, the, the nurse and the other girl, you know, mass hole chicks defending <laughs> defending the wall. Just absolute chaos. But uh, you know, this guy is. I guess he's had a hot on for Dave. He read the Post article. I'm sorry, the Times article before. And, it's like, buddy, like, just, you know, make up your own mind. Don't judge people on a fucking a news article. And, and he made an asshole out of himself, and it, it was hilarious. But uh, I guess we move on. Hopefully you folks enjoyed it last week. I know maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but try to give you a little side of Dave and, you know, get a little shine to him. What's up, guys? I'm back. Wit's back. Pink Whitney's back. And last week I talked about Labor Day and summer summer ending. It's unfortunate. I hope you all enjoyed great celebrations to end summer 2023. But now we're basically on to the fall and we're on to Pink Whitney season in a sense of football, right? I talked about college football last week. Well, NFL, baby, we back. It's the season. It's NFL season. And I feel like what goes well with the NFL besides barbecuing is drinking. And if you're going to get involved in having a couple drinks and enjoying your favorite team play, I'm a Patriots fan. You know, I was spoiled. Pink Whitney wasn't around for all those Super Bowls. But if you start drinking it now, maybe your team goes on a run. Maybe there's some sort of magical shot with Pink Whitney that you and your buddies do, and then all of a sudden your team wins six in a row, gets in the playoffs, and goes on a run. So NFL begins the season of Pink Whitney. Also, Fall golf, my favorite golf. I'm a New England guy. So New England golf in the fall, nothing beats it. And Pink Whitney makes it even better. So in the summer, I go Pink Whitney on the rocks. But in the fall, I might just chuck even like a little dash, a little splash of lemonade, right? I know it sounds crazy, but if you go Pink Whitney with Pink Lemonade, it's kind of a double dose of wham. So we got NFL football. We got golf in the fall. We got soon to be hockey season. I mean, we're coming down on 30 days till opening night. So Pink Whitney's where it's at. New Amsterdam's where it's at. We can't thank you guys enough. Keep drinking it. Keep enjoying it. Keep getting a nice little buzz off it. And we'll see you around Pink Whitney season 2023. It just never ends. I got to give a little bit more shine to Dave here too, because I woke up Saturday morning and I have uh, I have tweet notifications on for Dave, so it's just it's a thing that a lot of us do. Like a lot of us had it at the old office, um, and so anytime Dave tweets, I get a notification on my phone. 
which is unbelievable in this situation because Dave tweeted out uh, he loved Colorado. Colorado plus 800 on Saturday. Right away, I, I happened to be looking at going through my lines, going through all the lines, and I'm like, wait, I love Colorado. I'm, I'm taking that. 200 bucks plus 800. Nice little payout for my Saturday. Help pay off that vet bill. So mm -hmm. shout out to Dave for that one because that was huge. Wow. They must awesome. have missed college Eight football being back, though, boys. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. I love it. Merles, what, uh, what's Buffalo to win the Super Bowl this year? You want to throw a little something on them or what? Um, I think I saw them at plus 900. Um, I'm not betting on them. That's my team. I do not bet on the Bills. I bet on the Bills one time. It was in the against the Giants in that Super Bowl, and the guy missed the kick oh, three feet right. right. I cannot bet on my team. I will just be happy if they win. I actually just listened to the interviews. They had uh, Josh Allen and the coach on PMT a couple weeks back, so I just listened to those to get me ready for this this week here coming up. I'm all fired up for the Bills and – it could a lot be of a hype in year. general for Buffalo. I mean, just like mm -hmm. I, I love the Sabres heading into this upcoming year. The Bills are going to be good. And then, boys, we have a Chicklets Cup a month oh, away right man. now. A, one month away from today, we have a Chicklets Cup in Buffalo. So I can't wait. That was another thing I saw this weekend. Uh, Terry Ryan was in Buffalo. He was doing a dry run for us at the World Championships of the street hockey, and he won. So hopefully he found a couple guys for the big deal selects there, and they can get over the top this year against the uh, – no space. Terry Ryan is incredible. He every like probably once a week I wake up to like a voice message, just a voice message from Terry Ryan. It'll be like eight minutes long of him just like breaking down the big deal selects roster, like talking about who does what good, how great they're going to be, why they're going to win this year, why they're going to take down nose face. He's so excited. I can't wait. Uh, Merles, I mentioned EBR earlier. How you hitting yeah. him so far? Had yeah, we, I, yeah, we came out hot first game of the year. We take it. We get a puck line Jesus to cover the minus oh. one and a half. I'm counting the money. Everything is great. Saturday, I was doing all right. I was up. The team was up six to two with six minutes to go. Six to two. I had them minus one and a half. I'm laughing like, oh, this is going to be another big day. I'm going to sweep the board. S tied it up six, six in six oh. minutes goes to overtime. So I lose the bet. And it's oh. been a little bumpy since then, about 500 on the year. So we'll get it going again. I actually have a game. I'll give you a pick right now for Friday. This is an early pick. Help you, G, with pay off the rest of that debt. It's Friday. It's the Champions Hockey League. It's Eelves, I-L-V-E-S. It's in Finland, Eelves. It'll be three-way, minus 127. They'll take care of business against the Czech team at home. So little winner for you Friday. And uh, yeah, it's great. The Champions League is back. They did a couple funky rules I talked about before. And the one where you can keep scoring on the power plays. So it's been really cool. So I've been doing some live bet and I see the team down. They get a power play like, well, they can score two quick ones on here. Do you think any of right these back. rules will come up, come come to North America? Um, I, I could see that one coming over like. It, it, it was good for the two minute power play, but it, it got a little weird. This one team took two penalties at the same time. So they had a five on three for a full two oh, minutes Jesus and they, they scored two on it. So like in that situation, I thought it was a little like a little unfair, but I love the full two minute power play score as much as you want. It was really cool. Well, Merrill, you must know which, which team changed that rule back in the day. Uh, it used to be you, had, you got the full two minutes and what team was so good. They had to change the rule. You know? Oh wow! It got to be Canadians. Oh, oh, the Canadians. Oh, was that long ago? I, yeah, they were was, that good. I think it was the fifties. Yeah, it used to get okay. the whole two minutes, and they were so goddamn good. They cashed in all the time, so they made it. So once you scored, that was it. That was the end of the power play way back in the day. Hmm. Little little trivia for you. Uh, what do you say, G? We got Tuka Rask, uh, Bruins icon, no doubt about it. Won the Stanley Cup back in twenty eleven. He met us at the hotel a couple weeks ago. Had an awesome chat with him. Uh, you, G, you, you were dying to get that shit question, uh huh? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I used to live in Newton. So for those who don't know, I put we put it in the vlog. I asked Tuka, Tuka Rast. There was that. There's just there's been this long running conspiracy theory that the when the Bruins lost the last game of the season a couple of years ago to like not get into the playoffs, uh, Tuka Rast was at Buffs the night before, which is a big wing place, and he ate so many wings that he ended up shitting himself in the morning. I had to ask. I had to ask as RA was taking the picture. Just put my Big J Journal hat on, just like we should. And uh, yeah, Tuca said it wasn't true that like the the owner's daughter created this rumor. 
And uh, so, yeah, I'm just just doing the the people of Boston some some service, putting my big Jay Jerno hat on. But this is an incredible interview. Uh, I think Tuka Rask is the best Bruins goalie of all time. So, R.A., what do you say we send it over to him? Absolutely. Without further ado, here is Tuka Rask. This interview is brought to you by Chevy. Chevrolet has over 1,900 certified EV dealerships and over 5,500 EV trained technicians. Chevy has been in the electric vehicle game for over 10 years. They have the knowledge and skills to sell or service a Chevy EV. We were fortunate to check these vehicles out back in Scottsdale earlier in the year. These things are unreal. The interior is sick, all computerized, unreal stuff. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these EVs one of these days. And it's true. You have less routine maintenance on electric vehicles. But if you need maintenance on your Chevy EV, they have technicians that are EV certified no matter what. All over the place. These things are great. The nationwide dealership is a true value to consumers because we are there for you with any electric vehicle question. If you're looking for an electric vehicle, man, you got to go out, get one of these Chevys. They're unreal. The colors are great. The vehicles are great. And you can learn more at Chevy.com slash electric. All right. It's a huge pleasure to bring on our next guest, a first round draft pick by Toronto in 2005. This Finnish goaltender played his entire 15-year NHL career here in Boston. He set team goalie records for wins, games played, shots faced, and saves in both the regular season and the playoffs. He also won the Vesna Trophy in 2014, the Stanley Cup in 2011, and just two goalies in NHL history have a better career save percentage. Thanks so much for joining us on the Spit and Chicklets podcast. Tuka Rask. How's retirement going, my friend? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Very, very excited. I've heard a lot about good things about this podcast so i did the luch for luch i gotta do the two there we go <laughs> every time you get to use two k's two points who uh do you know who the other two goalies are who have the better save percentage career-wise uh i think hashek's one of them uh not a bad one to be yeah i don't know marty from the 70s did, did you pay really? atten- and, did you pay and, attention and, those are the only and two Hasek Hasek and ken dried yep Wow. That's unbelievable. I'm surprised it was that low for that era, too. Yeah, exactly. That was yeah, a big-time goal ride. scoring yeah. era. Do you, did you pay attention a lot to the goalies and their stats when you were coming up? Were you a big like goalie nerd? Not really, no. Like, our, um, you know, in Finland, growing up there, we got, like, the NHL Power Week every Sunday or whatever. So we'd show one game or something? Or highlights? It was just, like, highlights. Oh. You know, and then you'd see the Stanley Cup Finals. That's about it. No shit. So, you know, that's like mid nineties, I'd say when I was around seven, eight years old when I started paying attention to hockey more and more. There's like John Van Beesbrook, Mike Richter, Patrick Raw, like those so guys. So the Finn goalies, which is now just crazy, the the development, they hadn't really been over there yet. Nobody well, who's the first dominant Finnish goalie? Dominant? I think Posse Norman was the first one to get a starting job. Okay. That was probably Early 2000s, maybe. So maybe Kippersov was the first, like. Kipper was like a superstar. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, Norman was in Atlanta. So. Yep. No one to really pay attention. Were you a goalie that. right from the beginning? Yeah. Always oh, a goalie. My, your dad or? No, my uncle was a goalie for the local team. Then my cousin picked it up. He, he was uh, two years older. And I just, liked, I just liked it. I mean, I did. I always say that I was so lazy to back check that I figured <laughs> it's just easier to stand there and, like, take the frozen tennis balls in your head you know but yeah i just you know i fell in love with it there was never any fear either from the pucks coming in like you wouldn't like wince as they would be shot at you You loved it no get right in front of it i think that's that's something that these days kids don't even realize that when we were playing there was no masks in the backyard games and the you know in finland it's you know 20 below in the winter time and the tennis balls freeze up so you kind of learn to use your glove hand pretty quickly no way okay interesting Wow, when did you start thinking a pro career might uh, be in the offer for you someday? Like, probably around fifteen. You know, when they start doing the select camps for the national teams, um, I get selected to the whatever group of four goalies and how many players, and then you know you play four or five tournament national tournaments a year, and now you know that's fifteen, sixteen. So then I did good in those, and then I you know moved away from my hometown to a bigger town to kind of make it to the next level and that's kind of when i started thinking that maybe i could make a profession out of it so your hometown team wasn't one of the teams is it league what is it called over there uh yeah it's like league league, league so uh, yeah the, the hometown team was maybe like a minor one yeah it was like one tier below okay kind of, yeah like ahl to NHL. Yeah, yeah 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 
So you had to move pretty young, right? Like, was that rattling? I was 16. No, I, you know, my parents tell me all the time that I, ever since I was five or six years old, I would inform them that first chance I get, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Oh, really? <laughs> and that, that was, you know, it's just, I don't know what that was, but, you know, then 16, I probably had seven or eight teams that, you know, I could have picked, but Ilves and Tom Parrott just was the right fit. And There's no, like, draft or anything? It was almost like free agency? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, the scouts go and look at the national team games, and then they kind of just approach your parents at that time. I didn't have an agent, obviously, you know, then pretty quickly after that I did. But, they, you know, the scouts, man. Who were the you, other uh, kids your age from Finland that went on to play in the NHL? Were there any others? Uh, the 87s, not too many. Okay. Like, I don't think. Maybe five or six of us played. Oh, all right. You you said you told your parents when I hit a certain age, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like that's the way you said it to them. With the, probably, is, is, not is within it, those words okay. with the <laughs> f bomb, but like yeah, pretty much. Is it because you thought that there was more for you, out, out, maybe even outside? Of, yeah, you know, eventually? like you have that vision. You know, you want to be a hockey star or something. You know, like obviously you're not like thinking clearly when you're seven or eight years old, but like that's just kind of like the mindset that. I had, I guessed it. And I, you know, I realized that my hometown of 25, 30,000 people is not going to be the, you know, the end game. If yeah, it, yeah. And, and did you always have a killer instinct? Like, were you putting in the, the, the work in the off season? Was it kind of just like what everyone did, where as a group, you guys from the, like your team would work hard or summers, would you take off, play soccer and, and be a kid? Exactly. So I played soccer till I was 15. And oh, I was basically I, when you left. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, you know, you have to kind of make the decision at that point you know, which one you want to pursue. I was, I was pretty good at soccer too, but hockey just fit better. You know, I grew a lot when I was 14, 15, and then, you know, coordination wasn't as good in the soccer field. And then hockey, you know, worked out better anyway, so. When but, you got to the, the senior team or to Tampa or whatever, was there a goalie coach there that kind of like helped you? Was there somebody where you were like, wow, I just took a big step because of this person? Oh, for sure. Like we, we had goalie, like they were so far ahead of like anybody else as a country, I think. Yeah, what is that? Even my, like when I was a kid, starting at like seven years old, you would have a goalie coach, oh, you know? Wow. And we started working, like the butterfly style came, you know, maybe at the age of 10 or whatever. So you kind of like start working on that, but you know, it's, it's a small town and you know, there's one goalie coach for how many goalies there are. But then, you know, when I moved out at 16, we had, our team had a goalie coach and then you really start getting technical and like just doing repetitions, summer skates, we like the no pucks. We just like glide and move around in the skates. You're on uh, the ice too. On the, the ice, time. yeah. Wow. You know, so when, when you were, so you, when you were 10, that's around the time that the butterfly came, came about? Yeah, yeah. Who, who was the origina originator as far as goaltenders that came out with that? Wasn't it Patty Roy? Wasn't he like the- Was he the was, first guy? I think in the NHL, I think so. And before that, what? It was just stand up style. You just kind of figure it out on your own? Yeah, kind of. Just stop. Well, just get stop lit the up. Just get lit up. Stop the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and did and did you stick with that your whole career, the butterfly, or did you end up like adapting? Is there any other different ones now? No, I think I I was probably considered more like a hybrid guy, like try to stand up more than just a full full out butterfly goalie. You know, like some of these bigger guys now, like all they need to do is go on their knees and they cover the whole whole net. But yeah, I was probably more like a hybrid. Uh, when was your first trip to North America? It was 16, 17 maybe. I think we went to, uh, outside of Edmonton, there's some kind of a tournament there I played. Like under 17s, I think, or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. But I like, so I jumped an age group. Like, so I played with, I'm an 87, so I played with the 86s and fives in the national team. Yeah, so, I saw you even played three World Juniors. Yeah. It was like pretty, I mean, people I, get one, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, what was the first one? It was Grand Forks. I had a luxury of playing against. Oh, like, that was the Crosby. That team. was the eighty fives. Yeah, yeah, the Crosby. Well, Crosby was the underage, but they have like yep. Getzloff, Perry, Berge. That was like the Fanuf double double yeah, Dion. Double Dion. They had oh, like yeah, out of twenty three, they had like twenty first rounders. Yeah, yeah. So yep. good luck trying to beat that. <laughs> Did you come over for the draft that year? You got drafted? No, my draft year was the lockout year. Oh shit, that's right. Too. Yeah. What were your expectations going into it? As far as where, uh, where you might go. There were some rumors that Ottawa would pick me. Uh, that was like the most interaction I had from all the teams. 
And then, you know, after that, I had no idea. Like then, because obviously I, I think they were number nine or something. They didn't pick me and then just kept going and going. I had no idea who would, might pick me. I was just hoping that first round choice would come and then Toronto picked me. Did Toronto. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, whoopsie. Look, no, and they've no been looking clue. for a goalie ever since they got ready for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your team? That's why I root for them the most. Okay. I grew up liking them, and then I'm on the payroll with the Coyotes, and then I, I jumped on the LA Kings bandwagon too this year. I just, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a I like that. when it comes to picking yeah, a lot it, of teams. It's, I'm, I'm that way too. Teams. Got yeah, seven. it's yeah. good. Whoever's on top, that's what you cheer for. That's. <laughs> so when they, they uh, traded for it, well, when Toronto traded you, were you pissed off, bummed, in, indifferent, happy? Like, Did you have a clue it was coming? No, so I it was I don't know if you heard this story. I think it's documented somewhere, but it was a midsummer party in Finland. You know, I was I don't know eighteen, nineteen. We're on a three day bender, and and some. <laughs> and it's not lake. getting dark out either. It's not getting dark. So like, I don't know, midnight, two a.m. I get a phone call from I think from my agent or whatever. Like, hey, you've been traded to the Bruins. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Fucking I hear shit, you know? <laughs> Just like 25 beers deep at the time and then we'll deal with it on Monday. But uh, but it didn't bother me because I, my plan was always to stay in Finland a year or two anyways. Mm -hmm. So I never even attended the uh, Leafs camps or nothing. Like I, they sent me the uh, draft jersey. That's about it. So there was never any emotional connection? No, you know, like I never went there and so... And then I like I didn't know anything about the Leafs. Obviously, I knew the Maple Leafs are a great organization, but but I knew even less about the Bruins. I'm like, who the fuck watches the Bruins? Like, <laughs> but you didn't even know like the media like shitstorm that you would have been in had you not been traded, right? Like, so you didn't no. know if he was even no. Yeah, so it, it probably was a good thing in the end. Yeah, true. Oh, like, as if though the media isn't hard in Boston. It's nothing close. Nothing. No, no, no. I mean, it's okay. yeah. Oh, fair enough. Nothing close. Yeah. And, I mean, and they, just the fact you didn't know that it was a, I guess you're right. Like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, haven't exactly. played for him yet. Right. Yeah. And the, like, I knew the reporters called me after the draft and, you know, like they start stirring the pot right away. Like he's the next guy, he's the next guy. So I'm like, what the, like, I haven't even been there. Like, what are these like Toronto reporters, whatever. So yeah, worked out great. Though. Blessing in disguise. Right. What, what did you know about Boston before you got here? Anything at all? Nothing. <laughs> nothing no shit nothing no. and expectations to make the nhl or just planning on being the ahl that year because i mean you had a ridiculous first season right you got called up a little it says but did you go into camp thinking like oh i want to be a starter right well, away shit i don't even remember but like so the first year i, I stayed in finland you know when, when i got yep. traded I, I played in finland and then like was my, it obvious you were ready to move on though like I, i'm kind of like i'm dominating here it's ready i'm ready to go yeah i was ready to take the yep. next step after that because i i think i played two years maybe two or three years as a one number one in finland you know so then obvious step and the plan had was to go to providence and but you know like you coming over you're not gonna make it if you're just like hey i don't you know i'm just gonna go and see what it's like so when i came to camp i'm like oh i'm gonna be the best goalie and i, I don't know how good of a camp i had but Obviously, I didn't make the team. Yeah. You know, you don't know that as a young kid that the team's set. Yeah, you know, exactly. you're yeah, just you like kind of like think that you have a chance, but you're looking at it as it as tryouts and like the GM's like, dude, you got a yeah. chance. Yeah, and you know, like all the speeches before the camps are usually like, oh, there's some spots open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. right. <laughs> and then you're like, what the fuck? I had to get camp and you sent me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No trust. No more trust. Who like who were the guys you were able to lean on when you first got here? Because you were up and down between Providence and Boston. But did you have any good mentors as far as vets down there? Yeah. So the first year, I think I was up quite a bit because the goalies were hurt. So I was, I think I played like four games or something and I was probably up 20. And those were starts or just get in? I, play, I played four games up and then I was backing up for like whatever, 20. So, but our, our group in Providence was a uh, veteran group, you know, a bunch of like guys who have been around six, seven years. So that helped a lot. You know, you're 19, coming from Finland, you know, speak English, but. Any other Finns? Uh, first year, I think, Noki may have, you don't, did you yep. play with him? You play with him, I played yeah. with Noki. I think he was, he was there first or second year. And then Miko left and then forward. He was with me for one year, but the Bruins never really had any fins, you know? That's right. Yeah, I know, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. It's not a, that's, that's a, it's actually a good point. No, it's like I a, think when I think of fins, I kind of think of Nashville and Minnesota. Maybe that's just like obviously mm -hmm. Rene and, and then Miku Koivu, but yeah, Boston has never had that many at all. Just no. never thought about. 
What? But in the in the AHL, like, was like Krejci already over? Was he already in the NHL? Like, so this, this, these guys who it's finally kind of over, right? I mean, Luch is back, but what was the core in terms of age? Like, were you pretty friendly with all these guys? When did Marshawn come? So me and me and Marsha came at the same time. Oh, okay. Kretsch had been here a year, so he was kind of helping me out too. You know, I knew him playing against him in the national teams and whatnot, and being a Euro fellow European as well. But he was Kretsch was up quite a bit that like his second year, you know, in here. Uh, Quater came. You're still we, real good friends with him. He still yeah. lives around here. Adam yeah, Quaid. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the development guy for the Bruins too. Nice. Uh, you know, Luch came at the same time, but he was, he's the big shot. I don't think he played a game in the minors. Did no, he? he went yeah. right to the show. Yeah, exactly. Like I can never look back. Everybody around. Yeah. People out. Eating up yeah. grown men. Exactly. Him, Johnny Boychuk, you know, he was there. We had a great group of guys who actually, yeah. you know, ended up playing for the Bruins too. So Yeah, I know. It wasn't even like a crew where guys got traded. Like everyone was pretty much there in, in 11. Yeah. And yeah. It was yeah. Kind of this influx of like the veterans that were already there and then some nice young blood being injected yeah. into the lineup. Yeah. And then, I mean, you wanted, what, a few years after you'd gotten over here, you were the backup to Tim Thomas at the time? Yeah, yeah. So that was, what was that, my fourth year maybe? Yeah. Because I started, I had a lot of starts that my third year here. And then, you know, we lost the infamous series to Flyers. And then, you know, we go to Europe, start the next season. We don't know who's going to be the starter, so teammate takes the job. We played you. I was there. Yeah, was, yeah. I was yeah. There the what guy. a great time, huh? That was awesome, buddy. Prague. <laughs> it worked out for us, but not for the Coyotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guess, exactly. Uh, you guys must have partied more than we did. Oh, yeah. That was, we were done after that trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I oh, thought we would be, too. But Yeah. No. Spent my salary at the the, the discotheques there, <laughs> the bar discotheques. The women there were incredible. Oh. You go to the grocery store and like the clerks were tw twenty out of ten, but, uh, but 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 back to your team. Sorry to hog the mic here. <laughs> but you guys, yeah, you guys started the year over there, and that was a uh, yeah. But it was an open competition at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I we Who's lost. Coaching I, then Julian, obviously. Yeah, Cold was yeah. I I started the first game. I think we lost four one or something. Timmy played the second one and probably had a shutout or something. And then you know he played most of the games. We split the net during the regular season quite a bit that year but then he obviously playoffs was out of this world how he played uh, but yeah so that was my fourth year in the league and you know we won't win so they say hey you know it's kind of yeah this is easy. this is easy you know probably can every year show up just go to the finals I, like you know Sagan was whatever 19 yeah at the time so we had like a bunch of us young we guys put him in that game against Tampa and he had like six, a couple six goals right it was like his coming out part of like they have this guy too yeah Right, yeah, and then, so that was that was a good run. What was the relationship like with Thomas? Like, I know him a little from the Olympic team. We actually were the two guys who missed the flights home because we were out the night before. But like a different guy and such different goalies, right? Like, like you just stand there and the puck hits you, and he's fucking kicking and out of position. <laughs> yeah. But as a guy, was he helpful? It was it seemed to me maybe he could be like kind of get away from me. It's my net. Like, I guess there's different relationships and all that. Yeah, no, not at all. Because I think. We learned a lot from each other. You know, I think, he, well, f first of all, he played in Finland for a long time. So he's like half Finnish. He still has a bunch of friends. Really? You know, over there. Yeah. So that helped. We had the same agent, you know, that helped. Um, but yeah, I think just to watch him in practice and how much he battled kind of like gives me as a young guy kind of like, well, hell, I just can't like... Yeah. be the first rounder here who's kind of like fucking get the job on and you know so you actually have to work for it so he taught a lot in that sense and maybe from my end you know like being calm and like more technical than he was you know he probably took some out of that and then you know goalie bob the his, legend coach you know awesome guy right? yeah he's an awesome guy his his gear was terrible though the way he was his, oh, oh, God, oh, oh helmet and stuff oh, oh. would you ever chirp him about oh. that stuff yeah you think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he like I was I was polar opposite of that because like I stuck with the same gear like I never changed to a point where like these equipment guys are like come on like oh this he was is just gonna harassing help you. him let's yeah let's just like get you some new you know chest pads or something I'm like no 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 I'm I'm good but Timmy would have like a garage full of pads he would just like fix him by himself and show up one day and like bring this new invention he has just created. Come on. Yeah. Like what was yeah. the, what was the craziest thing that he changed about his gear and, and brought it to the ring? I think we, didn't we talk to somebody when they had a goalie where they created like a claw on the end of the uh, the skate blade? 
so they could push off a little bit better the way that they would they would sharpen it probably was it stuff with the skates well everything one year it was towards his last years here he like eddie belfort i guess trademark some like uh you know like the outside part of the goalie skates whatever so timmy like contacted him and like asked his permission to wear them so they were like from the fucking 1970s <laughs> look like you know this is like 2010 he built his helmet too right he built his helmet. timmy yeah but, yeah i, yeah, I don't know his own you, helmet yeah you gotta try to get a hold of him and ask what the craziest thing is i, I think yeah, that, i don't know if he has the internet where he's <laughs> living in a yes. bunker so we'll see <laughs> are you able to keep in touch with him yeah, yeah 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 talk to him every once in a while what's the story like he just moved off the grid after i think it's all like kind of like embellished of him like living in a bunker but yeah i don't think he's in the he's mix. not living in a he's, bunker he's, <laughs> he's, I he's not in the freaking prudential tower here i, I saw downtown. him recently he actually vermont had horrible flooding like and he went out and helped and did a ton of oh, wow. like uh volunteer work to really help that state he played at uvm but I, I i more make the joke i just think when he was done he's like i'm i'm out like he's not interested in doing media he's not yeah, interested yeah. in any of that stuff right yeah you're lucky to have me here. Buddy. Exactly. I'm, I'm well, I, mean, I'm like, like, four years. I mean, we, we, we might as well get to, to that. I mean, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you a little bit later on. Like, how did you feel with, with dealing with not only the media, but maybe the fans in Boston? Like, do you feel that you were given the respect that you deserve based on your career stats and what you did for the organization? Because there were, it seems like there was a few instances, the bubble, especially one where you had to attend to a family issue where I felt like they unnecessarily, like almost like, some of which turned on you. Well, that's that's that comes with the territory, you know. Like the the media is hard here, that's for sure. But like that never bothered me because maybe early on when you're like, well, I guess not because you're a young guy, you play good. They're like pumping you up, you know, and they're just yeah. waiting for that one opportunity to like turn on you and and start chirping. So then you just realize your skin gets thicker, and you realize like, hey, it's, they're doing their job, I'm doing my job, like. Might as well not even pay it. And you're not reading or listening to stuff? No, you can't. I mean, no. dude. Yeah, you would not How do you shut year. that off, though? I mean, you're... For, I think it gets better once you get older. Like, it, definitely that happened to me. But as far as the fans, like, I think the fans are great. Like, they... I walk in the city, like, people are just, like, thanking me and, like, hey, thanks so much for everything you did for the city and for the team. And it's not the fans, but it's, like, if you listen to the media and you get wound up in that shit... You know, you might start thinking like, "Whoa, maybe the fans turn on me," but no, it's, it's yeah, just, it's the vocal minority, and they're and they're loud, yeah. and they're on, and sports radio the is sports just looking the, for oh, dude. sports radio is like in this city probably bigger than anywhere else, right? And like, so if you get a couple guys that go against you, there's fans who don't know the game. They're like, "Oh, he's not good." Yeah, and and I guess that's true. Like, it's almost like. Uh, yeah, very rarely does somebody come up to your face and say anything. Like me in Edmonton, that was a different story. They hated my guts. <laughs> yeah. But most of the time, you you think people don't like you, and like you said in the street, like, oh, great for me, you gotta get a picture. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's and like, that's all you experienced. Yeah, exactly. That's, and I always like, I I didn't care if I had a bad game or a good game. I'd I go out and eat and hang out, you know. And then at least that that way you get the real feedback. If somebody wants to come and tell you you suck, then hey, good for you. I mean, correct me if if I'm wrong. I always thought it was one of those instances of like. Thomas kind of flopping around and just like making these crazy saves. And then they see you where it like looks like you're not trying as hard. Do you know what I mean by that? Where it's yeah. more his style and what they saw. And then they're like, oh, this guy, it just doesn't look like you're giving it. Like Carey Price was effortless in the way that he was able yeah. to do it, right? And then Halak was doing things that he didn't really have to do. And then there was Canadian fans like, Halak's better. Like, I, yeah, yeah, do you yeah. think that had something to do with it? I'm maybe? sure it plays a part. Yeah. To, yeah. You know, especially, you know, when when you know me and Timmy were playing then Timmy left and I took over and you know if I didn't play that well you know they still compare us and you know it's a fresh in their memory seeing Timmy you know making these incredible saves and stuff and then you know but I don't think it didn't like get crazy like that I don't think but I'm sure in some instances yeah. do you think the um cup loss to Chicago was the best hockey you ever played that playoff because that was a lock for playoff MVP for you had you guys won but I just remember you at a level then I was like holy shit like you think that was the best you ever played yeah that one and then the 19 one as well you know yeah. like fuck oh. man that was, I was here for that were you yeah that was fun huh game seven yeah good oh, times yeah. oh my fuck god man. dude that's heartbreaking but it's, you go back to saying it's like you win it early and you wanted as a backup when Timmy Thomas was a starter, and you think you're going to be back every other year, especially with that group you guys had. I know it's just like, but you know, 
it's hockey. That's how it goes sometimes. Like, you know, we play great as a team. I play great. And, you know, it's just, we had games. I remember that Chicago series. I think like Dog Image or whatever had a post, like, yep. like we would have been up like maybe 3 1 or something. Like, shit like that just happens, like, within the series that like could turn things around. Then, you know, he misses an empty net. Now it's like 2 2. And then, like, Bad yeah, it's back, such you know, like, a game of inches. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, with your career numbers, like obviously the longevity speaks for itself. Like, how were you able to stay so focused and so even keel throughout the entire process? Obviously, it seems like Finns are just even keel people, but like, did you do like mental training in order to like visualize before <sighs> games? Like, what was it in your routine? How you were able to do what you did throughout the fifteen years? Uh, well. I had an episode in Providence. I don't know if you guys have seen one of the all time. Yeah. <laughs> one of the all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you do that snap show. Oh, yes, no oh, shit. Buddy. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. But then, like, you do that, and like, you come. come I think to the you NA, made Sports Center top five. ten. Yeah, one hundred percent. Or like, not so top ten. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, like, this is great entertainment. Like, the Providence <laughs> owner must have been like, yeah, yeah. when is the last time we've been on Sports Sports Center? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember somebody told me like that. They were like contemplating whether I should be suspended because I freaking tomahawked that stick at the ref and like, <laughs> you know, but somebody had said like, yeah, that's an understandable snapping because like it was absolute bullshit what happened in the shootout. And the ref, he's been in the league, Freddie, he's been in the league for 15 years. So we always joked about that because he was the- Oh, so he game. was down yeah. in Providence. Explain what it, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go give us so, the backstory. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a zero, zero game throughout the overtime. I'm playing like the best game of my life at this point. Like thinking like I'm feeling it feeling it nobody's gonna score on me going to shoot out no goals and like I don't know if like we scored first and then like there was like maybe the last shooter so I go poke check the guy loses the puck it goes like a little backwards sideways he skates to the puck wraps it around and then like shoots it on empty net okay and then the second one like we don't score then they come back and you know the guy rips it over my shoulder I just hear cling and the ref's like, goal. I'm like, there's not a fucking chance it's a goal. And there's no video replay at that point. And so, you're already on tilt from the first. Goal. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> so then, see you later. <laughs> the wires cross. Yeah, so you kind of learn from those things, you know. And then I snapped a hundred times, but just not on the ice. I was just going to the locker room and. Break sticks. Did, did break. coach or when you're pulling one of the teammates pull you aside and say, "Hey, you can't be doing that," or were they they just as visibly angry as you were about the way the ref called both plays? No, I don't think nobody said anything. Nobody said shit. It probably wouldn't be smart because I probably just fucking start throwing haymakers at, yeah, yeah, yeah. at that point. <laughs> but for for you personally, was that a learning lesson where you you kind of remained a little bit more even keel, or you would still have your snap show between oh, there and there? Oh, I would have my snap shows up until towards the end of my career but it just happened behind closed doors I once got locked in at Joe Louis Arena after we lost the game you know that little shitty ass yeah, changing yeah. room they had so I went there I smacked that door like 10 times the freaking handle fell <laughs> so <laughs> so their assistant trainer had to crawl through the roof oh, no. come down and like you know open the door you're like sorry man <laughs> we were like they had to hold the bus because I oh, like, just no. stuck there for like 40 minutes oh no <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough it was julian the coach then uh i think claude was still yeah. oh god yeah, yeah fuck um i heard you're a big uh heavy metal enthusiast like all the love, fins you love i wouldn't say enthusiast but like i love the heavier stuff more than you know something else i guess and you're and you're big into the drums i like it yeah yeah because i haven't played well i mean you used to play drums i played when i was a kid you know like a little bit and then i had an electric set in providence so we're messing around with matt lash off a little bit but that I, guy can play the guitar. Oh, he, he just released really an good. album. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, handsome bugger too. Yeah. So, like, I've played and I know how to play a keep a beat, but, like, I'm not a drummer. I just give me 10 beers and I think that I'm the best in the world, which, you know, I've showed up to stages and play freaking songs, but it's something fun, you know? What do about do? back when you played um, calling out guys in the locker room at all, calling out the team for their effort, or more just like individually focused on yourself? Like what kind of guy were you? I mean, most goalies aren't very loud in the room. I didn't know how you were. Uh, I wasn't loud, but I would, you know, if I had something to say, I'd yeah. say it. Uh, didn't happen too often. I would snap every once in a while and start yelling at, you know, somebody, but. And guys just knew it's, it's too snap and just. Yeah, nothing like, on. nothing, you know, 
that would happen like on a weekly basis, you know? Okay. Speaking of speaking up in the room, like Bergeron just retired, kind of talk about him, what he meant to the team, what he meant to you as a teammate and like just any stories of him in that moment. Well, like we're looking for bad up. stories actually. It can't all be good. Yeah. So give us some dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Give us yeah. some dirt give on Bergeron. No you, should know, you should know that he's perfect. There's no bad stories about him. No, but you know, he's he had been around, I don't know, four years already when I came because he was an 18 year old. You know, when he came. Yeah, he was, I was at BU still, and I was like, this kid's a second round draft pick? What the fuck? Yeah. You know, so he had learned a lot. Like, Marty Lapointe was in, you know, French Canadian. He was with the Bruins at the time. He kind of took Bergie under his wing, showed him the ropes. And, and um, you know, when I came, he was already a leader, you know, at the age of 22. You know, so then obviously it just like developed from there. And, you know, it, yeah, he's he's just a leader. You, I mean, you think, he's, what do you think he would end up? Could you see him like an Iserman role? Like, you think he'll always be in the game, like front office guy? I feel like guys like that, like there's like Crosby, Bergeron. It's like if they want to be GMs, they probably will be. But I don't know if if yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to him if he wants to take that route. You know, I think it would be a waste if if he didn't stay with hockey. Yeah, you know? and it's like I talked to him actually. You know, when I retired a year and a half ago, and you're kind of like, well, what am I gonna do? And like, I'm not, I'm not going on TNT and start, you know, talking to camera for... No? No. Or, no. or maybe, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, hey, I, I, I'll make a call. I'll give you my seat for a couple You know nights. what, though? Like, me and Z, actually, we were joking about that, like, when he was at Bruins, and, like, Zidane, if somebody would pay you, like, three million bucks, you'd 100% go on TV and start roasting these guys. Like, no, two cup. I would not do that. I'm like, well, fuck Well, no. that's because he's made a lot, and he, I heard he likes to save it. Too. Yeah, he's not he's a big not spender. A big spender no, no he, alligator arms <laughs> yeah. right here. But, uh, yeah, if they, you know, pay pays there yeah do whatever but um yeah so it's kind of like it's it's an easy transition for a guy who played like you know 15 plus years to stay in the hockey somehow because that's your school you know you like just, would you ever want to coach oh hey if they pay enough it's all about <laughs> that pay i don't think there's enough co <laughs> well, payment in coaching no like goalie coach like people Maybe. ask me that all the time like where you want to go there your hours are worse than the players. You start breaking down video and yep. like, so at video. this point, you know, when the kids are young, it's like that's not in the in the cards for sure. But you never know. Never say never. I was I was talking to Luch. I said, "You got any dirt on Duca?" We're interviewing him today. He goes, "Ah, oh, he's a, a chicken wing enthusiast." That's that's the bad story. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But you know, that's all he had. He said, "You're kind of like Bergeron, where you got a clean slate. There's no no not much dirt. Yeah. Other than the fact he was bitter that you guys weren't allowed that any beer. That is so bullshit. That is so. Oh, I, 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 wow. So I heard about that. The beer at the wedding. It was only spritzers. So, so my buddies, you know, a couple of my buddies in Finland, they listen to you guys. Um, and I was talking to him. I talked to him like every day, and he's like, "Hey, did you hear about what like Luch said?" I'm like, "What the fuck?" And Tori actually, he was Crook was in town too. He's like, "Did you hear what Luch said?" I'm like, "What?" And he's, yeah, you, there's no beer in your, I'm like, I call him, I'm like, Luch, what the fuck are you saying? Like, there's enough beer. Maybe, like, during a cocktail hour after the ceremony, there was not, like, 15 Peronis for you. But, like, <laughs> there was no shortage of beers during that weekend, that's for sure. What about after you guys won the cup? Um, some legendary parties. I mean, the one down at Foxwoods or wherever it was. Like, what did you do with the cup your day? And what do you remember in terms of, like, the four or five days after in this city? Or do you not remember anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we I do remember me walking out of the bus with the helmet on. I had Nate, Nate Horton's helmet on. That's another one he told That's, me. For yeah. two days you wore Nate wore Horton's the helmet. helmet after. <laughs> Wouldn't take uh, it off. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely sober that time. Uh, but yeah, we did the, the parade. Then we went to Foxwoods, I think. I don't know how long we parted. Maybe like three or four days. Everybody's just like... I mean, I'm ready to party because I didn't play a second through the playoffs, but like everybody else who grinded it out. To blow, got, yeah, ready to blow off. A anything yeah. from Sagan, that run, I mean, 19 years old, kind of like you said. I mean, he was, every time you'd go on the internet, in particular Barstool, you'd see him on a bar, shirtless, him and Marshan just going to town. <laughs> yeah, didn't they get kicked out of here after like a week? Like, they did. I think it's time to oh, go the, home. Oh, the GM yeah. told him to go I home. Not a GM. One of the senior members of the team said, all right, boys, maybe you should go home now, yeah. Wow. Yeah. They no. got the toss after yeah. bringing, the, bringing home a Stanley Cup. Well, the yeah, party's I mean, over. Sags was 19 and Marsh was probably, what, 21, two. So, like, he shouldn't even be at the bars, sex, but, like, here he is. Every, I mean, what are you going to do? You win the cup, city like this. So, like, it's tough to, like, let me let me take it easy here as a 19-year-old. Like, okay. uh, like, you were in Providence with Marsh when he was young. Was he the same exact same way when, as an 18-year-old kid? Is, or was, like, you know, cocky and mouthy, or was he kind of, like, Oh, yeah. And did you know he'd be this good? 
because I mean, he was, yeah. I mean, he was, look, we played against each other in the national teams quite a bit. You know, he was always, you know, kind of like the maybe third liner, second liner, because, you know, they had some good uh, players there as well. But I mean, he's the same guy. He's calmed down a lot, obviously, but he's, he's always been the same guy, passionate. He's got that fire and like he works out harder than, you know. He was skating, I think, five days after they lost this year. That's what somebody told me. Like, and, and he's been skating since. It's like he just he must just love the game, but that's fucking nuts to me. And he's not young anymore. I don't know. Was he trying to rip his groins out or something? Hey, I, 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 Berkey I, I, retired so he doesn't want to play anymore. I, I, like, fuck <laughs> this. Well, I, I think if I could go back, that'd be one thing I'd change because I used to take the full summers off until about August, but to stay on your edges and stay on your blades, I think from the overall career standpoint, it definitely helps it, out. Well, yeah, because like we used to like, we had to work out for our like shuttle run. You know, so you're like, you have to run. Yeah, like, well, I know. You know, which is stupid. Like, it's conditioning, okay, but like, you're skating. Like, I think you can do the conditioning on the, I think that's where it's trending nowadays anyways, what I hear, like, guys skate. Oh, these the kids summer. skate like maniacs. Yeah. To, to the point where I guess the, the problem is, is they're probably not developing enough muscle. That's why they're all so much skinnier and thin. Right, and, right. But then I, I just feel overall the game's becoming faster. Yeah. And yeah. maybe there's not as much emphasis on, on this side and, and bulk. Yeah. where they want these guys buzzing up. And I think the product on the ice, I mean, I'll, I'll ask you as a goalie from like the shot velocity from when you originally came in to now, like with the technology, the sticks, did it did it change drastically? Well, I'm glad I got out like two years ago because this... You, you were even noticing like, holy shit. Dude, yeah, I mean, th how fast it is and how fast it goes sideways, you know? Like it's yeah, it's the cross ice. Goalie. And then, you know, these re releases like can't even read them anymore it's just like like rip of wrists and freaking ghosts you know so guys like matthews i mean bedard who's coming in now too yeah the way the way that they're also able to like pull it in and then use the flex yeah does the that stick. affect you guys that much just changing the angle half a foot is that that yeah that's what yeah. they talk about yeah yeah it's tough because like you it's tough to get reset and then react to the shot you know like it's almost impossible so yeah it's tough but i i definitely noticed that you know, what was my first year, 09 or so, 08 or 09? And, you know, some guys probably still using wooden sticks back then. And What was, like, if you look back, like, what was your weakness as a goalie? Like, was there one shot or one part that you, you always kind of were fighting against? Or did you feel like, actually, at, at your peak, you were you pretty much didn't have many weaknesses? Uh, Yeah, probably when, when I was playing my best, I was, there's no, like... One thing that one sticks thing out. that would stick out. It would like change, you know. Sometimes you like get beat low block or more. Sometimes be high glove. It's just like. Were you watching video season. of yourself? We yeah, we would break down video at least last like I don't know, eight nine years of my career when Golik Bob came uh, full time. What makes him so good? Just like like easy well, to work with. Yeah, he's he's very smart. He understands who he's working with. I mean, look what he did with Linus too. Like, yeah, he's really good at kind of like figuring out what a guy needs and you know because some guys at least what i've heard through other goalies like some goalie coaches might may have their own like mantra that like they yeah. can't steer away from you know like yeah you, you dude my way highway and we then, talked about that with us remember biz one of the goalies um, was a legendary goalie coach and they were he was like we don't we don't fit do you remember that oh uh maybe it was lung well i don't know if it was sean burke but it was uh um lundquist guy yeah, it was Lundqvist's guy, and we so, interviewed a goalie, and he's like, he's a legendary goalie coach, but it was his system. I, yeah, I, I yeah, so that's like what works for not one guy doesn't necessarily work for yeah. the other guy. I remember Jersey, when uh, Berdura was playing, they would teach, like, the younger the guys, puck. like, play in the puck and, like, stand up, like, you know, hug the post like this, and it doesn't work, you know. Now it's called reverse VH. Is that what it's called? Lundqvist always talks about it on the broadcast. Dude, but, I... And I don't even know. But, but, but <laughs> uh, we, were, uh, we had Sean Burke on, though, but that's why I felt that he was such a good goalie coach because it was more about the communication and how is he going to get to know the person. Yeah. And then from there, he would establish the friendship, earn the guy's trust, and then talk to him about adjusting certain styles and, and what he was doing. Like I know with Mike Smith, because he was such a bigger guy mm -hmm. and he covered more than that, he'd say, why don't you give yourself a little bit more reaction time and then stand a little bit deeper in your net? Yeah, and I I didn't even realize how tall you were because maybe when you're out there on the ice, I don't know if it was the way you position. Like you're a pretty tall guy, so would you tend to play a little bit deeper in your net because as a result of that? I started doing that more uh, as the years went on. Yeah, but uh, 
I was always, you know, pretty quick on my feet. I could move. So I would get away with that being like too far out and stuff like that. But definitely when you get more comfortable with the shots and, you know, gain more confidence, it was, it's easier to kind of stay back a little bit and kind of like cheat for the easier route for that pass if that may happen, you know. I don't know how much hockey you watch now, but like in terms of the whole goaltending position changing with – it's like 50 50 now right like there isn't there's a number one guy on a lot of teams but a lot of teams don't and now the number one guy i think teams want him to play 45 50 games max like do you see that making sense like could you see that as your career was winding down and do you ever think like there'll be guys playing 65 games anymore i well they might be but i don't think they're gonna make a deep playoff run so that's so you're you're on board with all that i so i was i was saying that my last six, seven years. Like I had seasons when I played like you played 70, a lot. 70 games, 60 some games. Too much. And and I think the both runs we had with the like to the finals, I don't think I played more than, you know, definitely not more than sixty games, I would guess. And in, and in no shit, season. those playoff runs you catch fire. Well, yeah, you know, because like you you get a bank on, you know, playing twenty, whatever, four games on top of the eighty two. So like, you know, the guys are taking a beating if your number one goalie is like playing 72 games and then like almost 100 games total like yeah may have lasted like 10 15 years ago but now like where the game is like there's no way you can you know so it's for both the the mental and physical aspect of it because like i i couldn't imagine being a goalie because you got to go out there the full 60 and then the the mental preparation going into the game seems a lot harder than what like maybe a normal player would have to right and on top of that the up and down the up and down and the groin situation so is that is that why you can't be playing 65 70 games as a goalie anymore yeah it's yeah i think everything everything together kind of like adds up you know mental physical the whole wear and tear but like my other point always was to like hey like cause, you know games would be two one three two like tight games so it's a grind right but nowadays it's more trending like hey yeah. seven six it's okay so i'm like hey if i don't get yelled at letting seven goals and winning you know eight seven i'll play every game you know, i might <laughs> you know get pulled a couple times but like just you know fuck around and like all right yeah. like more like shinny hockey type of thing it's like it's not like as tight of a defensive game it was not at all my we, first years like we lost three two or four three like four three would be like a bad game for me like oh my god you let him like four goals why, why because of the defensive system because, you guys like, played the, yeah and like you know we would just they would be two one one nothing maybe three two uh why do you think the bottom line for goaltenders is getting so good i feel like the parody is kind of what you were alluding to where yeah there's just so many good i, I feel like there's no position in the world that where there's guys in the minors that are like this guy got a chance he's there's so many good goalies well you look at vegas this year right with aiden hill being able to step in i think he was yeah. their fourth or fifth goalie used during the year so like wh why do you think the, the the drastic evolution in this past maybe 10 years i don't know I, i'm sure the goalies are more athletic they're getting coached you know more at the younger age probably plays into it like i, I don't know i haven't really Maybe of that, everyone gets better it's no different everyone yeah everyone gets better and then i think the teams you know realize that we need depth in the goalie you know department because like you can't just have like three goalies who might be able to play you need like five or six yeah or you may need five or six so uh what about your your memories of the olympics did you get to play two games or we... one only one oh Cause I, yeah because 10 was vancouver did you play yep. yeah, yeah so i was that sort was my of. first so, yeah, that was my first year. I thought I had a chance to be a number three guy because we had Kipper and uh, I think Backstrom and Nitamaki. So I had, a, I had a great start for the year and I thought I'd be, you know, number three guy, but didn't get selected. And then Sochi, I played. How'd you guys do there? We beat you guys in uh, bronze, US. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't on the team anymore. <laughs> You stopped following yeah, after yeah, all. Yeah. Traumatized I got, by I got, I, I got screwed. Duke, if you were to like, you lose your confidence at any point, would that happen like quickly from a goal, or a, su a succession of games? How would, how would that happen in, in your case? Like, you know, if you would, lose like, my confidence? Lose, yeah, lose your confidence. Would it be like one goal, one game, a series of games? How would it like go? I don't think I would ever lose my confidence, no. but it's just like the feel for the puck sometimes is like, just some days it's not finding you. And it's like tough. But it's not a confidence thing, you know. I was always confident. Like then you just go, next day you practice, feel good again, and 
you know, give another twirl next day, you know. So Were you superstitious? No, not really. No, before I, games, there wasn't the same. I had to, I had my routines kind of, but I wasn't like, I've heard guys like, hey, if you're like. Who was the craziest? Do you remember? Marshy was kind of, or maybe he was just routine. I remember he did the same shit, at least summer skates. Yeah, but like I was always like doing my own, like I was just there playing soccer and laughing. I was just like hanging out in the trainer's room and just focusing and then I go stretch. So I wasn't even paying attention to what the other guys were doing, oh, I guess. Uh, I have written down here that uh, Lars Ulrich, he's uh, in Metallica. Ulrich, yeah. Ulrich? Yeah. He presented you with, uh, what did he give you? A drum, drum kit, kit before yeah. your 500th game? How did that all get lined up? So the guys know that I, like Metallica's my favorite band. So they got in touch with, uh, you know, Lars's drum tech, Jimmy, Jimmy Clark. I think he came from our, like, trainers, Keto and those guys. They got in touch with him and they were like, hey, you know, Tuke is a really big fan. You mind if like, I mean, they bought it, but then they got um, Lars to like record a video saying congrats. And Have you been to a bunch of their concerts? Yeah, so we went, uh, I've been into three or four. And then a year ago they played Boston. So then Jimmy came, you know, we hung out at the house a little bit and he treated us awesome. We we're side stage watching them play. Really? Also had written down that you're a big fish fan. Are you like when you go to those types of concerts? Like, do you smoke weed? Do you take mushrooms like RA would do? Like, are you allowed to talk? <laughs> are you a fish fan? <laughs> what the oh, fuck okay. Maybe it might, maybe I just made it. I up was then. like Metallica yeah. fish. I'm like, what the? Fuck? This guy's all over the map. Yeah, you are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. That when you true. go to Metallica concerts, do you indulge in, in any I type don't, of I cannabis don't, no. or mush? Just strict, strictly booze. Just beers and yeah. yeah and I you mean. even you even uh, launched your own booze, did you not? Yeah. How is what's We're, the beginning yeah. of that? Long drink. Yeah, the Finnish traditional long drink. Yeah, these guys kind of created the recipe. What's they, in it? The, it's gin and grapefruit. Okay. Yeah, it's like fresh, tastes like fresca. And they get you buckled. Yeah. I've well, had some. Yeah. They're I mean, excellent. What, what, I, they oh, sell them in North America? Or they, they sell them yeah, everywhere. North, oh, really? Yeah, so the traditional one is in Finland. They made it for 1952 Summer Olympics. And they just never like brought their recipe over here. Uh, or like really sell it here. So these guys, the younger guys, they wanted to figure out a way to start making it here. Created the recipe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and it's caught fire now. And how did they get, they just got in touch with you to invest yeah. or be? Yes, yes, so. Um, You're an influencer. Did you play with Hart Kind and Timu in Edmonton? Uh, yeah, I did. So he's part he's, of it? Yes, so he's buddy, Finnish guy, knows these guys, and they, they were like wondering if any hockey guys, Tamo would know would want to be involved. So me, Timu, and uh, Kimo, Timu. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I actually played with that Hart to, Kine, Hart to Kinen, and then he went on. He, is he still in the KHL? He was unreal he's, over he's, there. Yeah, he played there for... Making bank, too. Yeah, but now he's in Switzerland, I think. He's out. Like, yeah. He was an Ufa, I remember. Uh, th there was like a, a, a wasp that were, were named after you. Do you yeah. know this whole backstory and how the hell did this happen? Can you explain it to I do. We were just talking about that with my daughters because they were like, how did this They got about? stung by one. Well, no. They, yeah, this, it's something about bugs. And I'm like, hey, you know, there's actually like a wasp named after you. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You know? So I'm like, shut what up, up my own. You're yeah. making that up. Yeah, yeah. You know, so then I pull it out. I, I can't spell the name. Thermoderitis to Kabraski or whatever it was. <laughs> Why uh, why did they do that? Like how so the I fuck think the did guy, you get the guy who discovered it was like from from Cambridge or Boston, you know, like one of these scientists or whatever. And and he thought that that wasp resembled like like you want a long tank. drink? Like same, <laughs> exactly. The same movement. So, right? Something like that, yeah. The way they yeah. flew and stuff, the way they moved in their yeah. net or their hive. Yeah. No that's how it happened. Yeah. And then he just named it. But I think it was. Did you get like a plaque, or did you receive not some type yet? Of award but thanks or? for reminding me. I think I gotta get on it. Uh, but I think one, it's one of those playoff runs where we were playing good, and my name was probably on the docket, so that helped. Okay. Took a rask wasp. Is but that, is, that cool. the, is that the best accomplishment of your career other than a Stanley Cup? I is think it? so. That's got to be up there. And then <laughs> sure. and then the and then the drink. Oh, RA's. RA's oh, it's alarm, alarm works. Two two o'clock <laughs> alarm. That's about right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you must have a couple Boston yeah, well, questions for him. He spent first, 15 years here. What's your favorite Metallica album? I got to ask that first. We were just talking about it. Uh, well, it's got to be the Black Album, the first okay. one I ever got introduced to. I Is think. that where Enter Sandman's on? Yeah. 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 Can you uh, sing for us? Could, could you sing a little Metallica? I'll let you sing. Dun, 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 dun. I'll let you sing. Okay. Where were you playing the drums the other night after the concert? Loretta's. 
Oh, yeah. Did they ask you to come up? Or did you yeah, just have I, enough beers to ask I them? I don't know. I just <laughs> went in there and talked to the guys for a little bit. And, eh, I play. All the old goalies in the NHL could start a band. You got Lunkus, who plays a guitar, that handsome bastard. And then you'd be the you'd be the the drums. There we go. Any any other goalies that play instruments? Need a bassist. <laughs> Need a bassist. I don't. I would ask about Pasta when he joined the team. Must have been like a, a breath of fresh air. Did he have like a, like I guess a ripple effect on the room because he's such a happy, bubbly guy? I, even when oh yeah, kid. I mean, has he been on the podcast? Podcast? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a great dude. He and he hasn't changed one bit. You know, if anything, he's you know become more animated and, and yeah, yeah. going you know after he like gets comfortable speaking english i mean he still can't speak english but <laughs> whatever uh yeah but he was you know he was whatever 18 19 when he first came and he's a he's a very outgoing guy but he listens and he wants to learn from the veterans you know that's one of the better qualities in him you know he's, he had the respect when he came. yeah you know respect like he's like he's outgoing but like he's like paying attention and listening and yeah, it was definitely. What do the boys make of the suits when he first showed up? Were they, hey, tone it down there? Or, or did he gradually I don't think get he, into the craziness? He definitely gradually got to the craziness. He wasn't. He's like, I want to nobody showing up at 18 and wearing that shit. Like, you'd be like, buddy, we're going to take you shopping tomorrow. <laughs> what what percentage of outfits that he would wear by the end were you like, yeah, I'm down with that? I mean, you, you weren't throwing on nothing too crazy, were you? No, I no, nothing like like that. But. I don't know. He was pretty. He was pretty. I mean, he's stylish. You yeah. know, he pays. Oh, for style. sure. But like nowadays, who keeps up with styling? I like. I can't. Keep His sort of does. Oh, you do? Yeah, dude. No, like, I have the same pair of black jeans I've had for what, fuck, six, seven years now. Once you hit a certain age, you just don't have the time, or you don't no. care. Yeah. What are those? Those are those are Bottega Veneta. These are actually very. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, fifteen. You know what that is? <laughs> oh, exactly. Nine hundred. Justin <laughs> yeah. Bieber wore them, and I liked them, but he had the yellow ones. And I figured if I got the yellow ones, they get dirty too quick, and I don't got Justin Bieber money. So these ones have actually lasted me over a year. But those are the type of what are those shoes. Yeah, so it's thanks, what are those. But you pull it off. Thanks, buddy. You pull it off. Do you keep tabs in the league every night? You like a watcher of any, every NHL game, but just kind of casually? Very oh, casually, yeah. yeah. I like to play off hockey. Yeah. Were you surprised when the bees didn't go to Swayman? Like, were you thinking yes about... No, uh, yes and no. I mean, it's tough. But like, at my... Th I mean, I'm... I'm on the other side. I'm an ambassador, so I just go to the games. I don't even see the games because I'm hanging in the suites. Oh, meeting the but, season ticket holders. That's yeah, stuff. you know, like yeah. But um, it's tough when you like you keep rotating throughout the year. That's what I'm saying. And you then, know, like then you get to just keep it going. But I know goalie Bob's mentality has always been like one guy's going to take the reins and run with it once but, it comes to playoffs. Yeah, but yeah, I know it's tough. I mean, I wasn't in the room obviously, so I don't know what what was going on. But well, like, goalie Bob got. <laughs> thrown I heard the about that. that. I, yeah. I don't know. Cole Gullibaugh. <laughs> I was loving it though, because like he would always run under the radar. Like, like you know, he should. But like every once in a while, it'd be nice. Like, yeah, step up and say step something. Step up and say something and take a, take one of these interviews. You know. So I was. I called him after. I'm like, oh hey, buddy. <laughs> was he pissed? <laughs> I wasn't pissed, but it's just like, he's a happy-go-lucky guy anyways. He doesn't give a shit. Though. I hate to go back to game six, Chicago again, but after the Blackhawks tied up, were guys on the team maybe expecting Claude to call a timeout in that spot, or did, did he want to kill momentum even though it was going the wrong way? Again? RA, is, RA is obsessed with this. He would have 1,000% called the timeout, so you always go back to it. Because Claude always left them in his pocket. He, he never used them, so I wasn't surprised they didn't. It just seemed like it might have calmed you guys down a little bit. I have no, I have no idea. It's... So I was. They tied it to one one or what was it two two? Uh, what they tied. Well, whatever they tied it later. I think it was. I think it was two two. I forget the oh, actual cool. score, but it was, before they ended up, you know, scoring seventeen seconds later. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah. The answer to Should've, that. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, I have no clue. I, did you guys know Bergeron had a punctured lung and shit and was playing? Like, did you, were you even aware of that? Because I remember it came out. I was like, what the. F yeah, I think everyone's injured, but. I don't know. It's so long time ago. I don't like. Yeah. You don't remember all the details. But I know he was hurt. I think. I'm sure we knew. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it tells a lot about the guy. You've blacked it out. Yeah. Blacked that out. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I mean, uh, it's just one of those games like that. Right. Who, who was your funniest teammate? I mean, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. I tough to name one. I don't want to name one. And yeah. Then, leave a guy out. <laughs> but you know. Marshy's funny, Pasta's funny, Kretsch is funny. Every everybody's funny in their own way, you know. Like, um, you know, Kretsch is like he's funnier he's than dry humor. Right? He's so dry. Will he um, go back to Czech? Or you think he'll live here? 
No, I think they'll stay in the States. Yeah, his wife's from here, not from Boston, but from the States. And will you spend summers in Finland? Or? Yeah, we'll yeah, we just back. got back two weeks ago. Nice. We're there for a month. Usually we like month, month and a half we go there. Yeah. That's the best time to go. You Have you been? Um, I, I've hung out in Sweden a little bit. I've, I've yeah. been I've been to Finland to play a couple games, but then it was right back. But uh, beautiful, I mean, beautiful country. Like usually, it's pretty dark and gloomy during the winter, but right. the summertime, summertime, right around yeah. July, August, it pops, and it's basically like it is today outside. Just yeah, beautiful. Yeah, we usually go like late June till end of July or something. That's the best time. Twenty two hours of sunlight. So I know right now the ambassador, which is to be an ambassador for especially a team like the Bruins, like you have to have a pretty special career. Are there thoughts on what else? Like, are you kind of just taking it day by day? You mentioned it is hard after you retire, I mean, to figure something out, but. Yeah, I, I haven't really put too much like thought into like what I would want to do, you know, this, yeah. this gig's good because you meet a lot of people. Yeah, and, and from you, there, who knows From there, comes. you know, maybe there's some kind of an opportunity you can pursue after that, but I kind of like figured after I retired that I give myself like a year or two, mm -hmm. just to unwind, hang out with the kids and, you know. Golf. Exactly. <laughs> I want to say like stay home with the kids, but like my wife listens. There's like she's fucking. You're never home. You're always gone. So yeah. But at least my golf club is like ten minutes away, so I'm not gone for like. Last year we we there was a big group of guys. We played golf together and we teed off at like we weren't in the same group, but there was four four. Some say we teed off at eleven to twelve, and then at ten o'clock we're at Salem Country Club. Me and him are the last two. I'm like I gotta go. He's like what? Where are you going? I'm like, dude, I've been at this course for 13 hours. It's time to go. I just wanted another, I wanted a drinking buddy for yeah, a few more no hours. long drinks left. He's like, you're fucking leaving, you pussy. That's awesome. But that's like, that's why I like to stay close to home because like- Yeah, you can just walk home. You can just walk home or like, you know, you're not going to like get too crazy. Like when you yeah. travel somewhere and you have no like- You know what's going to happen. Like, then you have a couple too many. You're like, oh, I might as well have a couple too many. Next thing you know, <laughs> if I can go home and get yelled at. Would Big Z ever lose his shit in the locker room? Who? Big Z, Jara. Oh. No, he wouldn't snap. I mean, yeah, he would, yeah, yell, but he's not a guy who would, like, snap. I mean, he snapped on the ice a couple times on opponents. That's you, don't, you don't want that. Yeah, we don't want him grabbing people in the home team. No. Any more, all right? Uh, uh, well, you guys already asked about the the goalie situation. Like the last two years, they haven't needed to steal wins a series. Do you think that's almost a trend because there's so many good offensive players these days? Yeah, it's probably part of it. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's fucking hockey questions. I don't follow hockey that much. <laughs> like I said, I go to the Bruins games. I don't even Just watch get the drunk, game. Get drunk <laughs> as an ambassador. <laughs> no. Well, buddy, we, I, I mean, we can't thank you enough for popping by and. Uh, I mean, a, a hell of a career. Um, Amazing. I'm, I'm sure, fuck, with the way the guys are getting statues out in front of the rink, I'm sure you'll probably get one pretty soon. But uh, <laughs> an, an amazing career, man, and uh, we appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Next thank time you we'll too, see man. you um, on the golf course. Yeah, we got a uh, Sean Thornton, Tuka Rass sandbagger at one point with apparently Keegan Bradley on the bag. So that's big news. And then you mentioned teaming in him and Hartnell won our smoke. So you guys will come out, come for well, the crown. We'll see what happens. There you go. Not Love it. Thanks, Not happening. Thank you. All right, before we go any further, here's a word from our friends at Body Armor. Spitting Chicklets is brought to you by Body Armor. From sports drinks to sport water, Body Armor keeps us hydrated all day long, all summer long. I've been relying on the stuff. Body Armor water has been clutch. Love the strawberry banana as well. Whether we're talking, watching, or even playing sports, Body Armor is our go-to choice at Chicklets, at Barstool. Everybody dogs the stuff. It's so good. Real hydration, real ingredients, packed with electrolytes, vitamins, and nothing artificial. All kinds of great flavors. I've been on the strawberry banana for a long time. Blue raspberries, another good one. The best athletes in the world are on body armor. Ronald Acuna Jr., Christian McCaffrey, Alex Morgan, and the latest athlete to join the team, Joe Burrow. Awesome quarterback. My favorite one, like I say all the time, strawberry banana. Get, gets me through all these episodes. Me and G been doing all summer. We've been up late. Whether it's the water or the sports drink, we pound these all summer long. Keeps us nice and hydrated. Didn't play much hockey this summer, but a little street hockey. Afterwards, boom. Got to get hydrated. Body armor all day, all night. It's the best stuff to keep you hydrated all summer long. It's available in stores nationwide. So head on over to Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Body Armor. You can't beat it. Huge thanks to Tuka Rask for joining us. Awesome chat with him, man. Such a good guy. 
Well, I love that he's still in the area, so hopefully catch up with him later, have a pop or two with him. Uh, but, gee, you're hearing some rumors out there, I understand. Yes, yes. So I think we've added a new member to the Rumor Boys. Barstool Ooh. Chief has jumped on the train, and he posted a blog today that, and I'll read the headline, there is speculation that Patrick Kane will sign in Detroit once he's recovered from hip surgery, and I want to puke. That's the headline from Chief. Uh, there, are, there were some reports. Uh, I think Bleacher Report posted a, a quote from Kane saying, could I come back early? Yeah, probably. It's a lot better than I was last year. So the rumors are swirling. Patrick Kane potentially to Detroit. Merles, you were the Detroit guy last year. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Yeah, I mean, I would be a huge pickup because I, the big thing is they think he'll go back with Debrinket. He wants to play with him was is part of that rumor. I I can't see him going to Detroit. I I, I still think if he comes, it's Buffalo. It's Chicago or Buffalo to me. Yep, I think he wants to go home. Buffalo is 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 gonna be really good. I guess Detroit's gonna be pretty good too. But Buffalo is right there. Play at home. I I, I if I had a bet on either one, Buffalo or Detroit, I'm going Buffalo. See, I mean, I know Detroit, Chicago historically have a great rivalry, but since Detroit came to the East, it's just not the same. You know what I mean? It's I think St. Louis is more of Chicago's main rival right now. So I don't know if he goes there. I don't think it's, it's a big a deal if it happened when Detroit was still in the same division. But uh, certainly not going back to Chicago. It doesn't look like that. Huh, yeah, I mean, I I think Chicago he could definitely go back there. They have twelve million cap space. I think all, like it. If you asked me a year ago, I would say there's no chance that he goes back to Patrick. I mean, that Patrick King goes back to Chicago after last year, but they got Bedard. They got Taylor Hall. It's it just seems like the perfect like it just seems perfect for him to go back there to teach Connor Bedard how to become essentially the next Patrick Kane. But I, I love Buffalo, too. Buffalo's got eight million cap space heading into the season. I don't see why he wouldn't go there. They're a young, up-and-coming team. They have a lot of offensive talent, a lot of guys on the back end. Devin Levi, you know, Rasmus Stalin, Owen Power. Being able to play with Tage Thompson, I mean, I just... I don't know why you wouldn't go back to Buffalo. It, it makes it makes too much sense. But I think Detroit would be interesting. Detroit would be super interesting, and that'd be a great, great ad for them. I mean, if Dylan Larkin could play alongside Patrick Kane, I think that would be, and Alex Debrinkit, that's a line right there. Yeah, and I would think he's probably going to be looking for that fourth Stanley Cup at this stage of his career. I don't think he wants the mental guys and, you know, play with a, a team that's going to be fucking uh, chasing teams all, all, all season long. Again, Bedard, man, I'm saying it, 40, what did I say, Merles? 42 goals, 46 assists. They're going to be down all year. They're going to be chasing teams all year. That kid's going to light it up, 42 goals. Me and Pasha, I, we have a little bet, 31 and a half goals. I, we've got, well, I got to say what the bet is. It's significant, but I, I was willing to go five figures with Pasha. To, we can uh, say these bets bet. now, all yeah, right? Yeah, that's we can right, say too. these yeah. numbers. Well, I don't Pasha, oh, he don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, I got a thousand on Badad over 31 and a half. Uh, Pasha has under 31 and a half. And I was like, Pasha's that's like, the king of this shit. When Pasha, one time Pasha found me so drunk at a bar in Vancouver, he fucking takes his phone out to and videotapes me and is like, let's make a bet. And obviously I'm not going to say no. And we bet, which was the stupidest bet I could have possibly made. It was like, who will have a better record in the year 2026, the Boston Bruins or New Jersey Devils? And I think we bet like three grand on it. So just a, a terrible, terrible bet by me, but just typical Pasha coming in and, and scheming his way to a, a W bet. Scheming is a good word for it because he, he tried to get me because I've been talking about the Sabres. He's like, oh, let's do a little Sabres Devils points <laughs> bet. And I said, oh, let, let me check it out. And and on the sports books, they're like 15 point different. He's trying to go even money bet with me like Pasha. Go punt. Yeah. I, I mean, I was want to go up to, to Ted G's legit. I'm like, if you're, if you're willing to, but he only wanted to do a dime on it. So uh, you just mentioned uh, Devin Levi a second ago. Did you see that save he made in, in practice? You know, it was like a three on oath uh, situation. Did you, did you catch that highlight, no. G? I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, oh. and, and we can play it. I'll run the oh. video here. I mean, this is incredible. All right, I when you made that pick, when when I said if you could start a franchi uh, franchise with any player in the East, who would you take? You said Devin, Devin Levi. I, I kind of gave you some shit. I don't know if I did over the air, but in my head, I was ripping on you. That, that pick... It's not a bad pick, I don't think. I think he's going to do very, very well in the NHL. Very unproven still. Still got a lot lot to prove. But, man, this kid can play. And especially, like, we went to... We went to uh, I don't want to give too much away, but we're working on this college hockey project. And we did go to, to Northeastern. I won't, I won't divulge what the project is, but we talked to some people there about Devin Levi. 
And they said first to come, first in the locker room, last to leave. They'd have to come in on on off days and basically kick the kid out of the room. He does all this like VR headset stuff where he's not always on the ice, but he's always just like doing VR stuff with these like crazy head fo- uh like I I phone VR set. I don't fucking know, but uh yeah, I think he's gonna be a stud. Yeah, I mean, st- still young too. I think that was a, a key part of that too. You don't want to take a twenty eight year old guy if you're building a team. Get the get the young goalie. Anyways, rolling right along. Uh, weekly thing, G, grinding my gears this week. Brought to you by Big Deal Brewing. Once again, go to bigdealbrewing.com slash finder. Find out where Big Deal Brew is near you. And uh, this one, I told you, sometimes it's, you know, I, I, I struggle to find something that pissed me off recently. But this was easy, man. Uh, I can't stand when a grown-ass adult completely ignores a polite greeting from another adult. Like, outside my building the other day, hanging out, the guy comes out. And I was like, hey, how you doing? The guy keeps walking. I'm like, I was invisible. It's like, and it, it's like these, like, I, I'm not with these yuppie bashes. I, you know, gentrification happened 40 years ago here. I'm over it. But it's like, you motherfucker, dude. Like, how rude can you be? If someone just fucking walks right by you, doesn't say that. And it's like, you live in the same building. That just fucking drives me crazy, dude. Like, just smile, say something. But they act like you're a fucking ghost. And that ties into this one, too, G. When you walk into a building, you hold the door for somebody. And uh, they don't say fucking thank you when you hold it for them. 100% of the time, I always, if they don't say nothing, I always, oh, you're welcome. And I wait for them to say something back. It's like, fucking, just fucking say it, man. It's, it's, it's takes two seconds, but when people just ignore you, dude, fucking someone says good morning, good afternoon, they, and they blow you off. It's fucking crazy ignorant, dude. You just want to fucking trip someone right into the curb. Do you deal with that? What if the guy had headphones on, though, all right? Did he, he have did. headphones on? He did. He did. And listen, I, I, listen I'm, I know I grew up in Charlestown. Back in the day, it was like still the old school place. And, you know, it, it got gentrified 40 years ago. And it, like we revolted against it. You know, like we used to like, ugh, I can't get arrested now for like stab fucking tires and like, you know, key cars. You thought like people were going to be deterred from like moving to your neighborhood. Just stupid, stupid teenage shit. Matter of fact, the build that I live in now, I could say I used to steal bikes out of here in the garage like 35 years ago. Now I'm fucking <laughs> paying crazy dough to live here. And it was just, you know, stupid, <laughs> ignorant, like, all right, fuck these people that are coming here. And, and you get older and you're like, all right, well, I go to college and my friends live here and they move here and you realize everyone's just trying to make their nut but there's always a, a, a small percentage of people who just think they're fucking better or they're just highfalutin pompous because I worked on the uh, Warren Tavern Tavern the Water and I would overhear them talking it's like motherfucker you're paying three grand to live in grandma's old fucking apartment like you don't make this place better settle down but just ignoring anyone anytime anywhere just fucking say hello whatever dude it's just so fucking rude and when they're fucking you living, you're building it and they're ignorant yuppies, man, it, it's 10 times worse. So that's what's grinding my gears this week, G. Once again, Big Deal Brewing. Go to bigdealbrewing.com slash finder. Find where Big Deal Brewing is. And hopefully your neighbors say hi to you when you say hello to them. Exactly. Had a couple big deals on the golf course this weekend. And uh, hopefully I, I think people have been waiting and wondering when are Biz and Wick coming back next week. The boys will be back. They'll be drinking the Big Deal Brews. We'll be drinking the Pink Whitney, but they will be back next week. And I believe there's also a sandbagger coming next week, too, boys. So big sandbagger coming. Kevin Bieksa, Ryan Getzlav. We filmed it in Nashville. The boys are super excited. It's R.A. made his sandbagger debut. It is so funny. I can't wait for you guys to all watch. We've had this one in the holster for a while, so... Excited for that and excited for the boys to come back. I think all of Chicklets, the entire Chicklets world is excited for Biz and Wit to get back on the airways. I know I am. I'm 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 missing those guys. I haven't talked to them. I, I miss those guys. But the other thing I saw, you you just reminded me, Pink Whitney had a birthday over the weekend, right? Yes, yes. The four year uh four year birthday of Pink Whitney. We actually launched some uh Pink Whitney golf club shirts in honor of that. They're pretty uh not, not bad, the Pink Whitney Golf Club shirts. But yeah, four years. It's kind of crazy. It's gone by so quickly. I still remember sitting in the uh, the first taste test room that we had when I thought it was going to be a mixed drink. And I basically tried to chug it. And everyone was like, no, 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 it's vodka, it's vodka. So yeah, it's four years. It's flown by. Before we go any further, here's a few words from our friends at Labatt Blue. Lots of things are better together. Hockey, food, golf. Disco dancing, going out with the boys and gals, having a good time. But if you really want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. Me and G had a great summer, man. Whacked back tons of Labatt Blue Lights all summer. It's a great beer. Canada's best pills. If you haven't had one, you got to go out and get one, man. If you want to take a page out of the Labatt Blue Light book and enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. 
If you can't find Labatt Blue Light, then go to labattusa.com slash find it and see where it is close to you. All right, I got to hit the golf course yesterday. Very excited to go out on the golf course. And the Labatt Blue Lights were flowing. I actually, I was I was going there. I, I didn't have any, you know, I didn't bring any alcohol or anything. And when I opened my trunk, I forgot that last weekend I left a... 18 pack of Labatt Blue Light in my in the trunk of my car. So basically had free 18 Labatt Blue Light beers for the course. It was incredible. And like you said, it's the fresh Canadian Pilsner. Nothing, absolutely nothing is better than a, a fresh Labatt Blue Light, nice and cold. Absolutely. They tasted great on the course last week. Once again, you could find Labatt Blue Light at LabattUSA.com slash finder. Gee, another thing we're bringing back today, All Right Hamilton. Uh, if you kind of, well, not really new to the podcast, it was early, in the early days of the podcast, uh, All Right Hamilton was a, a question thing we did. You send in questions with hashtag All Right Hamilton, and we basically just took fan questions. And uh, I don't know, we just kind of did away with it. I guess it kind of got a little stale for a while, and we haven't done it for a little while. But we threw it out today because end of the summer, not much to talk about. So we're going to fuck around and throw a couple of these questions out there. Uh, we'll go to you first, G. Would you add... Two inches to your wrench or four inches to your height? This one's from uh, at Steve Miller, Stephen Miller, 44. All right, Hamilton. Two this inches is the, to your wrench or four inches to your height? This is the easiest thing in the world. It's it's four inches to height. Like, it, even if it was two inches to height, two well, inches you, to my you wrench. You down there, buddy? No, <laughs> no, I just don't give a shit at all. I mean, I, I, who doesn't want to be like 6'2"? I think, yeah, I just, I think that's the easiest one in the world. I, I'd add four inches to my height any day. Merle's. I gotta put it on the wrench. I'm I'm six foot six six one. I'm plenty I'm plenty tall. I wouldn't want to be any taller. Like I wouldn't want to be ducking under doorways and and harder to find a couch that fits you. And uh, why not add a couple onto the wrench? I'm Irish, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, I'm definitely going with the wrench. I mean, I'd, I'd rather be uh, six one with a, an above average crank instead of six five with an average crank. Definitely. I got the standard issue, so you know, no one's no one's complaining about it, but definitely not going to be right. Let us depend. See, I fall it. below that six foot line, so it's like it, everything changes for you once you hit that six foot line. So if I can just get those four inches, I'm happy. All right, uh, next up, uh, Greg Snyder, uh, G Snyder Five. He's been a long time Chicklets fan. How you doing, Greg? Uh, what's something that's popular that you just don't see the appeal of, G? All right, how? Hmm, something that's popular that I just don't see the appeal of Kodak Black. I've always thought Kodak Black as a rapper just stinks. I just okay. I, I I don't know what it is. Uh, that's one that's always come to mind anytime Kodak Black plays. I don't know how he has made as much money as he has. I don't know how he's as famous he is. I think I I don't know what he's saying. I can never understand the words coming out of his mouth. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say uh, Kodak Black. Uh, what do you got for us, Merles? Um, Some popular you just don't see the appeal of. I would have to go with the Kardashian show. My my wife was watching it all the time. I get stuck in some episodes, but I have no interest in that act. And uh, they're huge. So she always told me hey, she's a billionaire. She's done this and that. And they're great. But I have no appeal for him. OK, I would go with uh, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, I have no idea why people like that show. I know it's wildly popular, but I just never seen the appeal to it. No idea why people like it. But. I don't know, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. I got one, uh, too, yeah. that I'm going to get a lot of shit for, um, especially being the fellow Italian on the podcast. Uh, Aperol spritz. Uh, it's, it's you know, the drink of the summer this year. I just, I, I don't get it. I'm just not an Aperol spritz guy. I'll stick to my Pink Whitney and Big Deals. Just, I, it's too fruity. It's too sugary. I just, I'm not an Aperol spritz guy. What about you, Meros? Are you, are you an Aperol guy? I've had one or two. No, I've had Sith. My wife used to drink them the last couple summers, not this summer. She's pregnant, but yeah, that's not for me either. I'm a beer guy. I can drink the beer all day. I love it. And then do our pink Whitney shots for goals and, and winning bets like we we usually do. All right. Here's a good one from my uh, Jamie Hay. Uh, hey, R.A., longtime listener of the pod here. Just wondering if you had to choose one fellow member of Spit and Chicklets to live with indefinitely, who would you choose and why? We'll go to you, G, first. Who would you choose and why? All right, Hamilton. Definitely, definitely Mer. Definitely Merle, no question. No question. I think that's the easiest. I mean, it it would be, yeah, I think I think it would be Merle because I feel like we would just drink and gamble all day. And like, who who doesn't want to do that? Um, Wit would be a near second, though, just because, fuck. And then, 
Biz too. Biz is building this beautiful house in Arizona that I would love to live at with him with this wellness center, hot tub, cold tub, sauna, all that. Wit's got the unreal basement set up. We probably golf all the time. But uh, I'm going to go with my guy, Murr, just because uh, I love to drink and I love to gamble, as Charles Barkley said. What do you got for us, Merles? Well, I did live with the Wit. I lived with the Wit his rookie year and then his second year in, uh, or his rookie year in Pittsburgh, too, our second year there. And uh, he was like, he, you just got to manage him. Like, he's high maintenance. But like, at that time, we were like perfect gear because we were playing party poker. We would just sit on the couch playing online Wait, time poker. Time out, time all day. out. Isn't this when you guys ran like an underground casino yeah then uh yeah in wilkes we opened up the casino lockout year because we'd be playing cards we'd have like six guys every night playing poker would get stale we're like all right let's let's deal blackjack for these guys and they would just dummy us it was the craziest thing ever we couldn't beat them but um we had a lot of fun but he he was some work i feel like gee i don't know i think you would be easier to to handle so i'm gonna go with you officially i'll put g in and we'll be roomies let's go let's go yeah. what about you ra um <sighs> Probably biz, you know. I, uh, I mean, I know we, we've, we've had, we're very emotional. We've had a few fuck you matches over the years, always, always for, for good reasons. But at the same time, I think we're on the same same wavelength. We, you know, we we have a lot in common. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't work related, if we were just there indefinitely, and you know, we like to burn, and you know, he likes to tune out for a while, I like to tune out for a while. So yeah, I, I think biz would probably be uh, the guy I would probably get uh, along with the most. All right, one more from uh, Jack O'Connor at Jack underscore O'Con. If you could star in a movie, what current director and co-star would you want to work with? G? All right, Hound. If I could star in a movie, what director? I think in RA, I, Ben Affleck. I, I would love to work with Ben Affleck. I think a, as a director, as a co-star, I think I'm, I'm just a big Ben Affleck guy. Um, you know, with that probably comes Matt Damon as well. Um, but I, I'm a big Ben Affleck guy, Boston guy, so I'm going to go with him. So he, he would be your director and co-star? He would. Two okay. and one. Save a little money. There you go. Merles, what do you got? Yeah, the, I mean, when I think of a director, I just think of Titanic right away. James Cameron, right? He's the biggest yep. and the best. I would want to probably work with the best. He's a legend. And while I'm thinking of that movie, I guess I would say Leo, because then we can go out after, and I just want to see his whole act and... Uh, I think we could have some fun together. Uh, I would go, well, this is one of those like pair of directors, like we'll count them as one, uh, not the Coen brothers. I usually say them, the Safdie brothers, the guys who directed Uncut Gems uh, in Good Time with Robert Pattinson. I would like to have them direct and co-star with Michael Shannon. You know who he is? He's, oh God, he's been in a bunch of movies. He's kind of crazy looking, wild eyes. I, I, I should know 17 movies off the top of my head, but look him up. You'll know who he is. He's a kind of crazy actor. Uh, a little bit out there. I'd like to start with him with the Safdie brothers. I think that would be pretty unusual. Oh, Michael right. Shannon is awesome. I know this guy. This guy is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a dynamite actor. So, all right, one last one. Fuck it. We'll just do one more. This is from JR Why Not. Uh, what's the longest amount of time it's acceptable to use the bathroom at a family function? And how do you explain you had an emergency when you're in there too long? All right, how? Gee, you can relate to this recently. Yeah, I mean, as someone, yeah, as someone who almost shit himself at DJs and then had to go use his girlfriend's family's toilet for basically the whole night, I'd say, I mean, I'd say at a family party, I think anything longer than 15 minutes is unacceptable. But yeah, I mean, when you got to shit, you got to shit. You got to tell people, hey, I had to, I got, I had to go. Yeah, that's basically it. Merle's, what's well, an uh, acceptable amount of time and what would you explain? Yeah, I, I don't know. I would say anything over five minutes, you're going to start raising some red flags. Good move is, though, you always come out and pretend you're on the phone, start making a conversation, be like, oh, yeah, I was in That's there, a work call. call or something like that. So you can always pull that move off. Um, if it's if it's going longer than that, you might as well just take off and, and go home and then come back to the party or something like that. Yeah, me, take as long as you need, man. I mean, as you get older, things don't maybe work as good <laughs> as they did like 10, 15, 20 years ago. So fuck, man, if you're in there 15 minutes, 20 minutes and people are, oh, what you fall in? No, man, I had to do A, B, C, and D, and, and fucking, and I got to give you TMI. I'll tell you why. If you're going to bust my balls while I was in there, then I'm going to give you way more information than you want. Um, I used to have a, this fucking fainting spell, knock on wood. It hasn't happened in ages. And I had a note uh, for one of my jobs. It was like I had like a note to take as long as I needed in in the bathroom. So, like, I would go in there for like a half hour just reading the paper and shit. And, I, and they couldn't they couldn't say nothing because I, I legit had a doctor's note. I mean, I, I never fainted at work, but I had four times I fainted, man. Stitches, two rides to the hospital fucking concussions 
We had fucking things used to happen. I know. Yeah. Uh, post, what is it? Post micturation syn- syn- uh, syncope. Syncope is when you faint. It was right after I pissed you, my blood pressure would fucking drop and fucking I'd see paparazzi lights, boom, down for the count. Scary shit, man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it got me a note for work and got a uh, fucking half hour deuces. So it worked out in the long run. Uh, all right, boys. Uh, any final notes before we wrap up this wild episode of uh, shit talk and whatnot? I think I speak for all of Chicklets Nation when I say, thank fucking God, Biz and Wit come back next week. Thank God <laughs> these guys can bless yeah. the airways and they don't have to listen yes. to us three goons. Mm-hmm. Uh, also got a sandbagger coming out next week, Biaxa Gekslav, and buy the Pink Whitney Golf Club merch. It's unreal. Yeah. I, I told my mother, I was like, Ma, if you don't like that little clip from the first Nashville video, uh, don't watch the golf video. You're not going to be <laughs> happy with it. So to watch, watch the one we do with uh, Eichel uh, in Hannafin. I'll be a little better there. So Merles, thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure. G, good stuff as always. And the boys are back next week. So everybody who's been dumping on me and G for, for the last three months or whatever it's been, the boys are back next week. We'll be talking hockey. So have a great week. Hope you had a nice uh, summer and uh, see you then. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs>